Hello, Bioneers. I want to start by thanking with much love Nina, Kenny, and the whole Bioneers family, all of you, for the dogged persistence, commitment, intention, smarts, and heart with which you stand up for our people and our planet. For 34 years, you have been bringing together some of the most imaginative minds to envision a better, brighter, greener, more sustainable future for all of us, no matter where we live or what we look like. Let me tell you, as someone deep in the work on Capitol Hill, I know that this is not easy, that there are fault lines that feel impossible at times, that the money in politics that leads too many elected officials to destructive choices sometimes feels overwhelming. But even as I talk through those challenges today, what I want you to hear is that you are sowing the seeds of change on the grassroots level, and it is working. The work that our movement began decades ago to save our planet and our people is bearing fruit. Yes, there are many challenges ahead of us, but your organizing, our organizing, is turning the tide. In just two years, with the slimmest margins in history last session in Congress, we Democrats made a massive difference, a historic $369 billion investment in climate and environmental protection that we finally passed with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. We actually estimate that it will be double that impact when all is said and done, because the tax credits that we included for families to transition to electric vehicles and green appliances and upgrade their homes and save energy costs are proving to be so much more popular than even the budget officials estimated. We knew they would be popular, but not only that, the Inflation Reduction Act, as well as the bipartisan infrastructure bill that we passed, took on environmental justice for the first time with our Justice 40 initiative. When I first came to Bioneers two decades ago, I remember being before you talking about environmental justice, about ensuring that black and brown and indigenous communities who bear the disproportionate burden of climate change should be at the table for the writing of environmental justice policy and should receive the benefits of policies that we write. I am so proud to stand here and tell you today that the Justice 40 initiative is real, that we are working hard to restructure entire systems so that grassroots groups that organize on the ground and are closest to community are able to access billions of dollars of federal funding for those efforts and to help write the policies that will govern their futures. And with the hundreds of billions of dollars that we're gonna spend on fighting against climate change with electric vehicles, solar energy, onshore and offshore wind, we will be on track to cut carbon emissions by at least 40%, hopefully 50% by 2030. And we'll also finally take on big challenges, getting lead out of drinking water for kiddos and families across the country, investing in salmon restoration and our wild spaces and so much more. Now, none of this would have happened without the Congressional Progressive Caucus, which I am so proud to chair, holding the line again and again and again to insist that we pass Build Back Better in the House. Had we not done that, we simply went to pass the Inflation Reduction Act. 98% of what was in the IRA came from Build Back Better, and none of it was even drafted until the Progressive Caucus insisted that we would not vote for the infrastructure bill without the, also without the investments in climate change, childcare, housing, and so much more. Because of our organizing, both on the inside and the outside with our movement allies, we were finally able to get the giant wins of climate investments, expanded healthcare and forcing big pharma to negotiate to lower prescription drug costs, including capping the cost of insulin at $35 for seniors, all paid for, by the way, with finally taxing the wealthiest corporations and individuals to just begin to pay a little more of their fair share. It's a huge win. And I just want you all to celebrate it because we don't do enough of that in the progressive movement. Our challenges are so enormous and we have so much to do, but to take stock of what we have accomplished is important so that we can replenish, learn what worked and continue to grow our movement. You see, the only reason that I am in elected office today is because I want our movement to grow, our progressive victories to grow. 
because as you know, long before I was a member of Congress or chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, I was and still am an activist. My long journey here began when I immigrated to America at the age of 16, all by myself with nothing in my pockets working in villages across the world on global public health, being with women in villages who were part of the Chipko movement, saving their forests, feeding their families, taking care of their communities. That's what inspired me. Then starting and leading the largest immigrant advocacy organization in Washington state, and then going on to lead a national We Belong Together campaign on women and immigration with immigrant women, documented and undocumented, getting into good trouble as my late friend and hero John Lewis called it when we went together to get arrested for immigration reform some years before he passed away. Sitting with immigrants who had crossed deserts and bare feet to come to America, that's what inspired me to understand that we needed to be at the table where laws are being made, that we needed to organize inside state legislatures and in Congress if we wanted real progress to be made. As an organizer, I've often had people tell me that I was too naive, too idealistic, that what I was envisioning for an equitable and just world was just not possible, that politics was the art of the possible, and that I had to simply compromise my ideals. What I told every one of them is what I'll tell you now, that if politics is the art of the possible, then our job as activists is to push the boundaries of what is seen as possible, because the possible is not static. It is defined only by the mainstream establishment who defines it, that's it. So how do we do that? How do we change the boundaries of what is seen as possible? By organizing, by demonstrating and speaking out, for decades, brave advocates have raised the alarm about climate change in the face of brutal opposition from climate deniers and liars. They've raised their voices in a country that was resistant to changes, such as switching to solar or to wind energy or purchasing electric vehicles or using heat pumps in our homes. But that hasn't deterred that movement. Inside Congress, we've grown the Progressive Caucus to be about half of the Democratic Caucus. We've passed rules reforms in our own caucus in the past few years that have shown the power of collective action, work that has pushed us to organize our votes as a collective progressive block, to block bad things like fossil fuel permitting reform and to pass good things like the IRA. We've shown people what it means to stand up and to actually fight for ordinary people. We push the boundaries of the possible by building capacity among everyday people, the poor working class who thirst the most for change. We register people to vote. We educate people. We run for office ourselves. We build coalitions, foster solidarity, and build bridges to connect people. We are all connected. We are all intersectional. We say this about the environment, but it's just as true as for human beings. I'm not a mother on Monday, an immigrant on Tuesday, a worker on Wednesday, and a woman on Thursday. I'm all of those things all of the time. Racial, economic, gender, climate justice are all part and parcel of the world that I need to create for me, for my transgender daughter, for my immigrant constituents, for the young people who desperately need a planet to live on. These issues are all connected and make no mistake about it, our progress on climate change has come because we in Congress and you in the movement, the environmental and the justice movement, all of you in this room have built more diverse and more powerful coalitions over the past several years. Multi-racial coalitions that have advocated for bold ideas like a Green New Deal with progressive candidates like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren in the presidential elections who pushed those ideas to the national level. And none of our progress would even be possible without the black women in Georgia and the immigrants in Arizona who delivered us those states in the last election. After decades of relational, not transactional, organizing on the ground, those are the folks who made it possible for us to take the steps we took in the last session of Congress. Our successes happened because the climate justice movement never gave up hope when Congress took little to no action on climate for decades, because the movement never gave up hope when Build Back Better was killed by the Senate filibuster, 
We stayed strong, we demanded action, and at the end of the day, we helped spur clean energy growth and will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by about one gigaton in 2030, or a billion metric tons, 10 times more climate impact than any other single piece of legislation ever enacted. This is our movement in action. That is our theory of change at work, delivering a better world. As the first South Asian American woman in the House, one of only two dozen naturalized citizens to serve in Congress, and one of less than 100 women of color to ever serve in Congress, I can tell you that our representation, both inside and outside Congress, matters. The Progressive Caucus, with your help, is electing more and more diverse people to Congress. 16 of our 18 endorsed candidates won in the last election, including electing our first Gen Z Afro-Latino member in Florida, Maxwell Frost, our first Latina in the Midwest, Delia Ramirez, our first LGBTQ and woman in Vermont, Becca Ballant. So much hope, so much energy, so much experience bringing inside and outside together to create change. So, as difficult as these times are, what I know as an organizer is that strength emerges in times of crisis. These are the moments that test us, that force us to regroup and rethink, to build connections where they didn't exist before, to recognize that transformation occurs with eruption and disruption. These are moments to recommit to who we are and what we stand for. When I ran for Congress six years ago, I was one of just four in Congress back then who refused corporate PAC money. Today, more than 70 members refuse to take corporate PAC money. Nine years ago, when economist Thomas Piketty wrote about a need for a wealth tax, no one thought that was possible. But here we are, finally passing a corporate minimum tax in Congress and getting closer to passing a wealth tax here federally. 34 years ago, when Bioneers held their first annual meeting, less than a third of Americans thought that global warming was a threat. Now, a majority of Americans see the climate crisis for what it is, and they are joining us in fighting for aggressive climate justice. Change is not as fast as we want. But if we were not pushing for more, we would never get what we have. Our movement's work matters, and our bold progressive ideas are winning. As I always say, being a progressive just means being first to the best and most just idea, and then everyone else has to run to catch up with us. I won't lie to you. I was trapped in the Capitol during the insurrection on January 6th, and so many of us were very close to losing our lives. Our democracy is still fragile and tenuous, with insurrectionists serving in Congress and the big lie still being pushed by extreme mega Republicans. The only antidote to that is our engagement, our commitment to putting our hands on the moral arc of the universe and pushing it more quickly towards justice. That's why more people are voting than ever before and young people, black, brown, indigenous, poor, women, LGBTQ, are recognizing that we need to be at the table. And when we organize inside and outside, when we push hard and hold the line for the things that matter, we can win. Every time the odds are stacked against us, we rise up, we work hard, we organize, and we deliver. We may not get everything we want all at once, but we can get principled compromises. We don't just dream of a more just and equal America, we actually deliver it. So thank you, Bioneers, for always holding that vision and for working to deliver it. Much love, much gratitude, and much hope for more justice. With you and for all of us.